Joseph Sabota was born in Czech Republic on May 5th, 1920. He died in Prague on April 8th, 2002. He trained as an architect at the Central School of Housing in Prague and at the end of World War II, he became interested in theater and design. He started work with his hands as a carpenter, but soon realized that he belonged on the edge of physics. Using innovative technologies, creating more than 700 sets the world over. A magician of the stage who changed the face of theater forever. Josef Svoboda, set designer. After the war, he completed a five-year university level architectural study in Prague. He was an architecturally trained stage designer, but called himself a scenographer. Joseph Svoboda considered himself a scenographer rather than a designer. He chose to show a more holistic, architectural, non-naturalistic approach to design. In his later years, he became a professor of architecture at the School of Fine, Art, Fine and Applied Arts in Prague. He was the founder and artistic director of the Laterna Magica Theatre in Prague. Scenography separates into a series of partial elements, among which certainly belong form, colour, tempo and rhythm, in a word, the elements that are at the disposal of an actor. In 25 years, he has designed nearly 400 productions, including drama pieces, ballet and opera. In searching for new solutions, he was as radical in the rejection of past ones as any architectural or product designer at the Bauhaus of the 1920s. Zaboda always considered movement of all kinds, both physical and atmospheric, to be essential and committed to his work to finding some resolutions to the antagonism between the movement of the plot and the immobility of the scenery. In the second image, his two dominant scenic elements, lighting and kinetic architecture, he used low voltage lighting and ordinary light sources to create curtains of light. He divided the stage into five planes separated by strips of light placed across the entire width of the stage, catching impurities such as dust and residual smoke, thus making light visible to the audience. This created a foggy ambiance for the steamy Sicilian scene, the broiling sun and sweltering climate. The scenic departments of the National Theatre in Prague were structured as a collection of research laboratories that examined optical, mechanical and electrical qualities of stage equipment and the material qualities of fabrics and plastics in Zabota's ceaseless experiment with surfaces receiving, reflecting and transmitting light. Zabota has a consistent desire to find new surfaces to receive and to transmit projected images or the need to move large sections of stage smoothly and silently. He came up, he came up with a term, psychoplastic space, a three-dimensional transformable space that is maximally responsive to the ebb and flow the psychic pulse of the dramatic action and the movement of solid masses in space. As we can see in the first image, his designs were multimedia experiences in a scientific age, with mirrors, lasers, sheet metal and contralight and projections. <laughs> La Traviata, which translates to The Fallen Woman, is an opera in three acts by Giuseppe Verdi, set to an Italian libretto by Francesco Maria Piave. The plot takes place in Paris and in its surroundings in the late 1950s. La Traviata tells the story of the tragic love between the courtesan Violetta and romantic Alfredo Gramont. 
When Alfredo's father directly appeals to Violetta to relinquish her one chance of happiness, Violetta submits and her act of self-sacrifice leads to her paying the ultimate price. He combines science and art using innovative technology in his stage designs. For stage purposes, he used the latest mechanical, electronic and optical devices, many of which he has developed himself to create a kinetic stage. The purpose of Svoboda's stage kinetics is the belief that the theatre is distinguished from all other art emphasis on its intangible forces, time, space, movement, non-material energy. In a word, dynamism. Svoboda rejects a static stage. This strikes him as being a perversion of the essence of theatre. In my opinion, the mirror effect is a rich visual for the play, as it allows the audience to see the sheer vastness of the stage and the amount of actors and actresses in the party at once. It is the action of light within scenography that may enable life and energy. Through its action, scenography becomes performance. A length of blue cloth may, through the action of performance, become a river just through action. Six actors may become an entire army. The texture, quality and colour of the blue cloth may well achieve a theatrical reality, but it is the way in which fabric performs, its role within the overall plasticity of the stage that may endow it with what Svoboda calls the dynamics of life. Oedipus the King is an Athenian tragedy by Sophocles that was first performed around 429 BC. Oedipus thinks he has escaped a terrible prophecy that says he will kill his father and marry his mother. Throughout the play, he discovers that he unwittingly killed his own father, Laius, and married his own mother, Jocasta. The main theme is no matter what Oedipus or anyone else does, no matter how much free Oedipus will exercise, or thinks he does, he cannot escape his fate. The setting consisted of two rectangular towers, each placed off-centre on adjoining turntables, representing the fraternal struggle at the core of the opera. This allows for virtually infinite variety of spatial relationships for the many scenes of the opera and no loss of time for the scene shifts. The movement of one or both of the towers was often rhythmically integrated with the music. In my opinion, Svoboda decided to create never-ending stairs. This visually translates to Oedipus never escaping the fate of the gods. It is important to note theatre used to be dictated by the light of the sun, then candles, to gas footlights, and finally to electric light. However, it was only put forward that lighting be anything other than a static feature for viewing until the 19th century. All of these innovations can be attributed to one scholar artist, Adolphe Appiah. He also felt that light and manipulation of it was the visual counterpart to music, that light too accessed the soul of the work. The practice of lighting was completely redefined. Appia distinguished between diffused light, allowing visible scenery and concentrated light. Believed in the ability of light to be structural, fluid, plastic. Because of earlier artists like Appia, Craig and later artists like Svoboda and their theories, they have been introduced to post-dramatic theatre. Post-dramatic is an especially useful term that embraces a wide range of contemporary performance practice and is generally used to refer to the works that have been created from a perceptual elements and materials of theatre and which serve their own artistic purposes, not primarily those of the structuring device of pre-existing dramatic texts. Earlier artists like Edward Gordon Craig and Adolf Appia influenced Foboda greatly. Appia and Craig met in 1914. Appia began his work with Wagner and for him the music dominated and controlled the work. Craig was an actor before becoming a designer and director. For him, all the elements of production were of equal value. Craig explored the use of freeze or relief stage, a wide, shallow stage surrounded by drapes, structures and geometric shapes and a lighting system that dispensed entirely with footlights and side lighting and used only overhead sources. Appia began with the assumption posited by Wagner that the fundamental goal of a theatrical production is artistic unity. He categorised stage lighting under three headings, a general or acting light, which gave diffused illumination, formative light, which cast shadows, and imitated lighting effects painted on the scenery. The lights too would change in response to the musical score, thus reflecting or eliciting changes in emotion, mood and action. Et 
dans une maquette comme celle de Hamlet qu'il avait réalisée pour le Théâtre National de Belgique. Euh, et pour réaliser euh, cette préoccupation, il utilise des machineries qui sont quelquefois assez compliquées, des scènes tournantes, des plateaux glissants, des volumes qui entrent les uns dans les autres comme des tiroirs. Mais d'autre part, Hamlet is a tragedy written by William Shakespeare sometime between 1599 and 1601. Follows the young prince Hamlet home to Denmark to attend his father's funeral. Hamlet is shocked to find his mother already remarried to his uncle Claudius, the dead king's brother. And Hamlet is even more surprised when his father's ghost appears and declares that he was murdered. Hamlet feigns madness, contemplates life and death and seeks revenge. His uncle, fearing for his life, also devises plots to kill Hamlet. Shakespeare's tragic hero Hamlet's fatal flaw is, is his failure to act immediately to kill Claudius. The set itself at first glance suggested a massive wall composed of elements both solids and cavities, but the elements of the wall began to move. Parts slid forward to form platforms and staircases, while others receded and intermeshed to reveal further configurations. There was an extraordinary effect by the mirror that hung over the full width of the set at an angle. Svoboda believed the set should change psychoplastically along with the development of the action. Slowly the set began an instrument with many possibilities. In my opinion, Svoboda enhanced this play with his set. The set translates the interconnectedness of the plots between the characters in the play. Don Giovanni, opera in two acts by Mozart. Mozart's outrageous comedy tells the tale of a young playboy who blazes a path to his own destruction in a single play, in a single day. Don Giovanni, a young, arrogant and sexually promiscuous nobleman, abuses and outrages everyone else in the cast until he encounters something he cannot kill, beat up, dodge or outwit. For the set that Svoboda designed, all the props and furniture were stacked deep in the rear of the stage. At the beginning, the pieces formed the impression of a town and then came apart. The individual pieces were not in, in the shape of chess pieces. They were realistic and natural, but they were moved like chess pieces. The pieces began to move into predetermined positions, certain pieces for each scene. Svoboda mapped out every move precisely step by step with the music. In my opinion, the set was a response to the theme of manipulation of fate, the chessboard resembling Don Giovanni's life, but every move being premeditated. Ez Devlin uses the mirror effect to create epic visual storytelling. Influences Svoboda had on modern set designers like Ez Devlin. Ez Devlin is an artist and designer. She is known for creating large-scale performative sculptures and environments that fuse music, language and light. She thinks architecturally and spatially and loves to incorporate large-scale shapes in her designs. Much like Svoboda, she plays around with light in all of her designs. Ez Devlin has created a name for herself in our modern society, and her highly stylistic aesthetic is known to all designers. <laughs>